let's now use the Laplace transform to solve differential equations. And for this, let's try to solve y double prime minus 5y prime plus 6y equals 0 with initial position 4 and initial velocity 9. And for this, I would like to remind you three things. First of all, the Laplace transform of a function is just the integral from 0 to infinity of that function times e of minus st dt. So like a weighted average of f with e of minus st. We won't really need the definition here. What we really need are the two Laplace miracles. One that says the Laplace transform of the first derivative, so L of f prime is s L of f minus f of zero. And similarly for the second derivative, L of f double prime is s squared L of f minus s f of zero minus f prime of zero. And once again, all those formulae will be given to you. Now, what I'll present now will seem like a lot because it is, but the more you practice, the more you'll see it's always the same thing. In fact, in today's lecture, we'll do two examples. And here's the first one. The first thing is what you want to do, you want to start with the differential equation and take Laplace transforms. So step one, that's what I like to call take the L because you're taking Laplace transforms. transforms because once again we started with y double prime minus 5y prime plus 6y equals 0 and you just want to apply L on both sides. So plus of this equals Laplace of that. And then I want to remind you the Laplace transform is linear so this is the same thing as L of y double prime minus 5 L of y prime plus 6 L of y. A Laplace transform of 0 is 0 because you use a definition of the Laplace transform. And now what we want to do, we want to use our Laplace transform miracles because here, Precisely, we have the Laplace transform of a second derivative and the Laplace transform of the first derivative. So L of y double prime by our miracle is s squared L of y minus s y of zero minus y prime of zero, which becomes s squared L of y minus s times 4 minus 9. So s squared L of y minus 4s minus 9. That's on the one hand. On the other hand, L of y prime prime is s L of y minus y of zero, and that becomes s l of y minus four. And by the way, one thing I really like about this is, notice it uses directly the initial conditions. So we directly use y of zero and y prime of zero, whereas before we use them at the end. And now let's go back to our differential equation. So we have L of y double prime minus 5L of y. L of y, sorry, L of y prime plus 6L of y equals 0. And now we can use our formulas that we found. So L of y double prime was S squared L of y. 
minus 4s minus 9, and then minus 5, L of y prime was S L of y minus 4, and then just plus 6, L of y equals zero. Let's expand that out. So S squared L of Y minus 4S minus 9 minus 5S L of Y and then plus 20, I believe, plus 6 L of Y equals zero. And if you look at this more carefully, Notice this is precisely an equation for L of Y, because here we have a L of Y here and here. So if you can kind of solve for L of Y, what we get is S squared minus 5S, so S squared minus 5S plus 6, Plus six L of Y. And the rest we can have, so we have minus four S minus nine plus 20, that's plus 11 equals. And now we can solve for L of Y. But before we continue, I do want to mention something important here for checking your work. Here we have S squared minus five S plus six. You may ask, where does this appear in our ODE y double prime minus 5y prime plus 6y? It's precisely the auxiliary equation. So a great way of checking your work is your auxiliary equation always has to appear here. And then we can solve for L of y. So I think L of y is 4s minus 11 over s squared minus 5s plus 6. And by the way, the Laplace transform just wants to tell you, I love you because I love you, which is probably not the way you feel. And by the way, notice what makes this so nice is that this was purely an algebra problem. There was no differentiation whatsoever, and you know, which is again what makes Laplace transform so nice. Now, what's the next step? So we found L of y equals to this weird expression. The idea is this expression itself is a hidden Laplace transform. And we want to figure out what is this a Laplace transform of? Why? Because if we write this as a Laplace transform of a mystery function, then just comparing two sides, we will get that y is that mystery function. Exactly like in Scooby-Doo, where you see that villain, and then you're uncovering that villain, and you say, ah, it's been Dr. Payam all along. That's the same. And in order to do the uncovering, what we would like to do, we would like to write the fraction 4s minus 11 over s squared minus 5s plus 6 in a simpler form. And in order to write this fraction in a simpler form, yes, you may have guessed it, we have to use partial fraction. because you will see this will make the unveiling part so much easier. Now, remember how partial fractions works. So this is 4s minus 11 over s squared minus 5s plus 6. The bottom you can factor out. So 4s minus 11 times s minus 2 times s minus 3. And the idea is to write this, literally split this up as a over s minus 2 plus b over s minus 2. 
and then put it on a common denominator. So a times s minus three plus uh, b times s minus two over s minus two times s minus three. And then the numerator, let's expand this out. So this becomes a s minus three a plus b s minus two b. To be or not to be, that is the question. Partial fractions, that is the answer. So over s squared minus 5s plus 6. And then on the one hand, we have 4s minus 11. And then the other part, the other numerator, we want to write this as something s plus something. So a plus bs and then plus minus 3a minus 2b over s squared minus 5s plus 6. And remember, you want this to be 4s minus 11 over s squared minus 5s plus 6. And now the nice thing is, all you need to do is compare the coefficients. So what we then get is a plus b plus b is 4, and then minus 3a minus 2b is minus 11. Minus 3a minus 2b equals minus 11. And again, here we'll guide you through the algebra. So b is 4 minus a, and then you get minus 3a minus 2 times 4 minus a, equals minus 11, so minus 3a minus 8 plus 2a is minus 11. So I think we get minus a minus 8 is minus 11, so minus a is minus 3, so a equals 3, it's only one hand, and then b is 4 minus 3, it's 1. So B equals one. So what does that tell us? So let's backtrack a bit. So far, we found Laplace transform of Y was 4S minus 11 over S squared minus 5S plus 6. Using partial fractions, we wrote this as A over S minus 2 so 3 over s minus 2 plus 1 over s minus 3. I think that was a and that was b. And now you see the uncovering becomes much easier because if you remember your formulas, that just becomes the Laplace transform of 3e to the 2t plus e to the 3t. Where here, we just use that the Laplace transform of e to the a t is 1 over s minus a. And so in the end, what do we get? Laplace transform of y is the Laplace transform of 3 e to the 2 t plus e to the 3 t. And now comparing instead of staring, we finally get that the mystery villain function y is 3e to the 2t plus e to the 3t. And you may wonder, why? Why, Payam? Why all this torture? How come we had to go through all this Laplace transform gibberish to get the solution that we could have found using auxiliary equation? No, I'm not torturing you on purpose. That's not what I live for. The true magic will happen in a couple of lectures where we'll use the same technique to solve ODEs where the right-hand side even, isn't even a function anymore where we have Dirac deltas, 
Chum processes, and even convolution. So lots and lots and lots of exciting stuff. But this is like the karate kid part where you have to learn how to you know, uh, wash the windows and everything in order to do the cool moves at the end. 